In this video, we'll be doing a deep dive into DevOps or Cloud Roadmap. Why I say DevOps or Cloud Roadmap? Because there are a lot of topics that overlap between Cloud and DevOps. So I have created a comprehensive roadmap for you that includes both. And it is not something that I have generated from ChatGPT or gathered from somewhere. You know, this is based on my 12 years of experience in IT based on my past seven, eight years of experience working with different cloud and DevOps role. So if you are new here, uh, my name is Piyush and I work as a cloud solution developers at Google Canada. And I have worked with various cloud and DevOps roles. So I have worked as a cloud engineer. I have worked as a DevOps tech lead. I have worked as a DevOps consultant and many other roles related to that. So this entire roadmap has been built based on my real time experience and what resources I have used to transition into cloud and DevOps role from a production support role. So this will be really helpful to you. So without wasting any time, let me show you the GitHub repository that I have created for you. The reason why I have created a GitHub repository so that I keep updating resources. I keep updating uh, many important links over there and so that we have everything at one place. So let me share it. All right. So you will find the link of this repository in the description section below. Okay. Here is the you know, 100 foot overview of what I have created. So I have divided this roadmap into five different phases. First is a foundational phase, then core IT skills, cloud, DevOps tools, and then projects. Yes, you might have heard it 100 times that DevOps is not a role DevOps is a culture that is true, but DevOps is not just a culture like no one would hire you. No one will pay you six figure salary just to improve their culture unless you bring some value, unless you help them achieve something, unless you help them solve some business problems that could be through automation by incorporating different tools, processes by deprecating the legacy tools and processes and many more things, right? So for that, you would have to learn a lot of things. Just learning the soft skill would not be enough. All those soft skills also plays an important role. But this is what I have uh, come up with, okay? So it could take six to 12 months based on your experience, okay? If you are following a roadmap, uh, which says, you know, become a DevOps engineer in 11 days, 21 days, 31 days. I mean, this video is not for you because I have covered the basic, the fundamentals first. And then you see over here, DevOps start over here in the fourth phase. You should already have those things before you actually jump into DevOps. So if you have that patience, if you have uh, that consistency, if you are ready to work, then please uh, follow along with me, with me in this video. Okay, so as I've said, it starts with the foundational knowledge, Linux, shell scripting, that's the basic. And then you go ahead with one programming language, Python or Golang, right? If you are an absolute beginner, Python uh, is the recommended way. You know, Golang would be too overwhelming at this stage. So I would suggest start with Python, then go with Git and GitHub. Okay, this one is a small topic, so you can do that in a few days. So based on that, it could take around you two to three months for the first phase. Most of the time uh, will be in, you know, the first three topics. Git and GitHub won't take much time. Then uh, you move ahead with core IT skills. So core IT skills in that we have different topics around different areas of a software development lifecycle. So first is an OSI model. You should have the in-depth knowledge of OSI model. So this is an open system interconnect model, which defines these are the protocols that defines how two computers on the internet communicate with each other. So these two computers could be anything like I'm calling it a computer, but these could be two different devices. Let's say two mobile phones or two one computer and any other device. So it defines all the standards and it defines all the protocols, how they communicate with each other. So there are seven layers. Each layer has different protocols. Each layer has different devices that work on it. So you should have the in-depth knowledge of it. 
Then as I've said, internet protocols, you should know how SSH works, uh, all the different things, RDP, SMTP, HTTPS, HTTP, and uh, many other. Then how DNS work, how DSCP works, scaling, especially vertical scaling, horizontal scaling, wh what it is, why it is important, SSL, TLS, how it works, why do we use it and so on. Then all these topics. So have a look at those. Then you move to cloud. So either AWS or GCP or Azure. Now at this stage, you might also have some confusion, which cloud do you use or which cloud you should go ahead with if you are an absolute beginner. So for that, I have added a video link over here. So this one over here, I'm sure you will find it helpful. Okay. So have a look because there is no one line answer to that, which cloud you should do. It's just a 10 minute video based on some real time numbers, based on some facts. Have a look at that and decide yourself. So don't just go ahead with AWS because it's been the market leader. That's that's the old school way of choosing a cloud. Don't use that now. So try this out and let me know what you think. Okay. Then try to do at least one certification, one associate level certification in any of those clouds, like whichever cloud you have chosen. I have shared the resources over here. And here is another video which provide you more details about the certification, which certification you should be doing, why you should be doing and so on, like the future roadmap of certifications if you are interested in that. Then the fourth phase is about DevOps tool as I've mentioned. Okay, so it starts with, let's say, Docker fundamentals, container fundamentals. So go ahead with that. I have shared the playlist. So recently I published an end-to-end -end Kubernetes playlist that covers Docker as well from the basic, from the absolute beginner point of view and people have loved it. So I'm sure you will find it helpful. Check it out. Okay. Then CI CD pipeline. Now there are different CI CD tools in the market. And again, there could be a confusion which CI CD tool you would choose. So this is what I would suggest. Start with Jenkins. Why Jenkins? Because of so many reasons. One is it is one of the oldest CI CD tool that's been there in the market. The second and the important part is because it's just a framework that wraps all the plugins together. Okay. So you have a lot of work that needs to be done by yourself. So whatever you want to use, you use a plugin and you use all the integration by yourself, whether it is integration with GitHub or a build repository such as Artifactory or Nexus, or whether it's the integration with cloud, you use the plugin for that, or whether it's the integration with any other CI CD tool or any other monitoring tool, everything needs to be done by yourself. Hence, there is a lot of learning in that. Okay, so this is where I would say go ahead with that. I have shared one video. It's a three, four, three or four hour long video. So check it out. It will cover all the fundamentals of Jenkins plus some advanced concepts. Then learning Jenkins would not be enough. In today's competitive market, you should also have a good learning and good working experience with any of the modern tools. So these tools could be GitHub Actions or Azure DevOps or GitLab CI CD. There are many other, but these three are my top choices out of those. Okay. GitHub Action has been widely used, but it's the first choice of the open source projects because it's integrated with GitHub. So it makes sense, right? Many of the enterprises that are uh, working or that are running their workload on Azure, they prefer Azure DevOps with the for the simplicity it has because every single tool is incorporated within it itself. So it's, it's a, a really powerful tool that you can use. I have shared the playlist link over here. It has 16 videos, many real time projects. So you can check it out. Then GitLab CI CD is again, a, a really good tool. It is also YAML based. So you can use, I mean, these three tools, which, whichever you choose, they all have the YAML based syntax. So it will be easier if, even if you learn more than one tool, it will be easier for you to switch between one to two tools or like any of these three. The important thing to remember is focus on the fundamentals of CI CD rather focusing on the tool itself. Okay. If you focus on that, if you understand the different phases of CI CD, which phase do we use? Why do we use and so on? Then it will be easier for you to move between different tools. 
then the next part is infrastructure as a code tool okay so terraform is one of the good offerings for that terraform or pulumi you can go ahead with if you are interested in terraform uh, wait for the announcement uh, probably next week and you will see an end to end series on terraform and there are a lot of important things that i have to share so i'll be creating the end to end series for that so stay tuned for that and you will and i'll add the links over here once the videos uh, are published okay then monitoring logging uh, you know for that you can use the open source tools such as prometheus grafana efk stack or elk stack and you should be good then you know the most underrated thing or the most underrated skill or the thing that could be missing in your resume is the real time hands on projects so don't miss it it's really important if you see over here till phase 4 you have acquired a lot of skills a lot of learning but then recruiters or hiring managers how would they know that you have those skills unless they interview you and before you get the interview call you have to be shortlisted for that so before getting shortlisted how would they know that you have those required skills just mentioning one liner in your resume wouldn't be sufficient right so you should have some artifacts you should have some documents some uh, repositories that will validate your skill right so one way of doing the skill validation is through certifications right but that is specific to particular tool or technology but how would you show the that you have the required skill for a job so you do that by implementing the real time projects so i have shared the link of the 10 weeks of cloud ops repository which has multiple real time projects and here are some examples of what you can build so make sure you build these projects make sure you upload the repository on like make sure you upload the code on a github repository make sure you create the technical blogs out of it and publish it time to time on linkedin uh, twitter whatever you are using so that you would have an artifact to show in your resume okay so yes this is what i have built and you have that link in your resume as well so this is what i have built this is what i have used these are the challenges that i have faced and these are the resources that i have used to build these projects okay so if you do that you should be golden make sure you cover everything from phase 1 to phase 5 these all are really important topics make sure you don't skip any of these okay it's must haves these days uh in this competitive market as i have said where people are doing many extraordinary things you should have at least these things in your resume in your skill set and then only you will be job ready again this is specifically for someone who is just entering into devops or cloud role okay for the folks that are already experienced in cloud and devops and they are looking for a transition maybe i'll create a separate video for that because it needs many more advanced topics and assuming these fundamentals have already been covered by you because you have already been working so stay tuned for the i mean road map for advanced but this is specifically for beginners right okay so that's everything i hope you will find this helpful so let me know if you have any questions reach out to me uh, comment on this video like share whatever you can do to support and uh, i will see you soon with the next video thank you so much for watching i have a good day